Magnus! Let's go! AMD's new GPU is worse than you thought. They also are trying to make it so that they never lied to you again like they already did. And do you want Half-Life? But ray traced? Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. So sit back, relax, and let's delve into the tech news that's going on right now because it was found out. And one of the things that AMD didn't tell us during CES about its upcoming RX 6500 XT GPU, which is expected to be kind of the entry level one at $199. My audio recorder fell down. There was just a lot of unknowns. We didn't know how many PCs Express lanes it was going to take up. We didn't know if it had any sort of other caveats that AMD didn't particularly feel like disclosing. And boy, howdy, this GPU is worse than you thought it was, because not only are we getting roughly the same performance of an RX 580 released, what are we, four years into it? Is this the fifth year we're getting the same GPU? Besides that, it's actually even worse, because unlike the previous RX 580 replacement, the RX 5500 XT, which had eight PCI Express lanes of bandwidth, the RX 6500 XT is lower at four lanes of bandwidth for a reason that's not entirely known because AMD is not officially disclosing this. The reason this was found out was because ASRock posted this on their website where we could find that yes, it is PCI Express 4.0 by four. The 5500 XT released like almost two years ago had better PCI Express bandwidth than this card. So not only is this an RX 580, but it is is worse than an RX 580 because it has less bandwidth than a previous generation card. As you can see here, a PCI Express 4.0 device on a by four lane is eight gigabytes. The 5500 XT was 16 gigabytes per second, which is the same as the RX 580. And as mentioned, it's not posted by AMD anywhere because this is kind of a bad move. This restricts the cards in a lot of way because while it's not such a big deal that it's only four lanes on a PCI Express 4.0 setup, this is a budget card that might not be making its way into the latest motherboards that are out there. And if you put this on PCI Express 3.0, you still only have four lanes, which means your speed is down to four gigabytes per second, which is actually potentially compromising on performance. So not only is this card worse than its predecessor, it also is actually just really bad if you don't have the latest setup. If you haven't upgraded to B550 or gone to a B450 that has a BIOS that supports PCI Express 4.0, you could potentially be getting a terrible deal with this card. However, it won't necessarily matter to people who are using it for mining because they only use it on one PCI Express lane in the first place. But not only that, not only is it a PCI Express issue, but AMD has also removed different encoding and decoding from the 6500 XT that was present on the previous cards. So while this GPU can decode H.264 and H.265, as in it can play it back, it cannot encode that, nor can it decode AV1 like all of the other RX 6000 series GPUs could, or the previous RX 5500 XT. So this GPU is bad all around. It's $199 price point, which is the exact same price point we got for the exact same performance four to five years ago. It is limited in its PCI Express bandwidth, and it's limited in its actual use case features for somebody who might be wanting to build, let's say, a just basic Adobe Premiere Pro editing rig. You would not be able to use this for any sort of H.264 acceleration, which is just a bad call by AMD, at least as far as we're aware. Now, the AV1 and H.264 four details are confirmed by AMD. The PCI Express 4.0 by four lane is not confirmed by AMD, but confirmed by a board partner. However, this just strikes me as a unnecessary GPU launch entirely. I actually think this is a worse PR move to put this card out because it is so hamstring in a multitude of different ways. Do what Nvidia has been doing. They launched the RTX 2060 12 gig, relaunched the RX 5500 XT. Who's really gonna care but to release something that's gonna have this many limitations that most people are not gonna be able to get into the technical weeds about is just a bad look in my opinion, what do you think of the 6500 XT being all cattywampus? Let me hear from you down below in the comments. But now let's talk about something that's gonna have even more performance than you typically expect. XMG announcing their Neo 15 gaming laptops are going to have a setup where you can connect it to an external liquid cooler so that you can liquid cool your laptop when you're at your desk, but you can still take it on the go. Announcing this at CES to allow you to have very good portability and good cooling 
cooling. You need to cool that 3080 Ti with 175 watt GPU power and that 14 CPU core Alder Lake with DDR5. It's gonna be crazy. I just have one exception with it, which is they say it's the world's first portable liquid laptop cooling. Um, my friends, I had a video out on this. How long ago when this video release? June 25th, 2016 of a Asus GX 700 VO, which had a very similar setup with an external liquid cooled setup that you attached to a laptop, which, uh, so it's not the world's first. Come on guys. Come, come on, it's not the world's first portable liquid cooled laptop, okay? I, you, you bo look at this, look at this young Brett schooling you on that. That's five years ago, five and a half. Jeez. But something I wish I would have had five and a half years ago is better VR. And that's what Sony potentially will be giving uh, the, to us with the PS VR 2 and them announcing in a blog post all the details that you could potentially be expecting from this, including OLED displays, 2000 by 2040 pixels per eye and frame rates of up to 120 Hertz. And you got headset based controller tracking, better sensory features, foveated rendering through eye tracking. I'm actually really looking forward to Sony's next generation of PS VR 2. They also showed off a trailer for Horizon Call of the Mountain, which is a VR based experience of the Horizon world made by Guerrilla Games, which I'm actually really excited for. Hopefully we get it this year. They say it should be on track for this year. I want it to come out this year. I so want this that the PSVR one is bad for a lot of different reasons. This sounds like it's actually going to be good and it might be my VR headset of choice. But while you're trying to save up money for the PSVR two, why don't you save it by buying PC parts at a discount by going to our website, UFD deals, which will be linked in the video description. Let's talk about the hottest tech deals that are out on the internet right now. In case you want a one terabyte PCI Express 3.0 SSD, Sabrent so has their rocket going for $85. Really good speeds on this, really good company. Love this one for 85 bucks. In case you're looking for 500 gigs, a little slower, Crucial has their P2 going for $43, which is $6 less than the 250 gigabyte version. That is a steal in case you're looking for 500 gig NVMe SSD to stick into your PC. In case you're looking to stick some visuals in your PC, the Elgato Cam Link 4K is on sale for $106.21, which is about 23 bucks off in case you're counting. Speaking of things that are money off, let's get into the crypto stones. Bitcoin up slightly in the last 24 hours, but down tremendously from the last time I talked about it. Bitcoin sitting at 41.698. As you can see, it's just been on a downward slope for quite some time. Ethereum up 1% on the day, but again, still down to 31.43. That's the closest I've seen it to three grand in quite some time. Dogecoin also down half a percent to be at 15 cents right now. The meme stonks recovering slightly on Friday. GameStop closing up 7.3% to be at 140.62. AMC closing up 2.36% to close at 22.99. But let's talk a little bit about crypto things because PayPal is allegedly exploring launching its own cryptocurrency in the version of a stable coin, which just as a layman's explanation for you. It just means that the coin tracks one to one with the US dollar so that one US dollar is equal to one PayPal coin or whatever they're going to call it with the senior vice president of crypto and digital saying that they're in the exploration phases of this and that they'll let everybody know if, if and when they move forward on it. But I just, I don't understand. Maybe somebody can explain this to me. How is this any different than gift cards? That's like, if it's only usable at this one retailer for this one thing, that is store credit. You get PayPal store credit. This is in-game currency. If it's just based on a company, isn't this just the same thing as everything else that we've already had? Yes, it's on a blockchain. Yes, there's a ledger, but if it's the company who's controlling it, doesn't that make it centralized? And doesn't that make it legitimately exactly the same as everything else and not really differentiated. Like, am I just crazy? Or are a lot of these implementations of what crypto is, is just money making schemes just reformatted. You just slap on the crypto label and then all of a sudden it's new and innovative when in reality it's like, no, we've, we've had that for, We've had that for a really long time, friends. Uh, you, 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 NFTs in video games, that's just freaking microtransactions. We have, we've had those. You're still getting the money. You're not decentralizing it. It's not like I can transfer this to another game. Like I still gotta pay Ubisoft. Freaking what? 
but you're not gonna be able to pay Spotify for Spotify Hi-Fi because it's been indefinitely delayed. It was supposed to come out towards the end of last year, the higher fidelity version of Spotify. But now in a forum post, Spotify saying that uh, uh, we'll get back to you on if it ever exists. Which I personally think is a better move than Tesla's move on full self-driving where they're just saying, hey, it's gonna be ready by the end of 2019. Eh, 2020. And 2021, listen friends, this is the year of full self-driving being here. And Elon Musk so confident about that. He's raising the price on the actual package that you add onto the car by about two grand to make it cost $12,000 as of January 17th for, let me pose it again, a beta software that not everybody who has paid the money for it on their cars even has at the moment. But in case you wanna get in line and you're in the US, the price is gonna keep going. So you better get it now before it gets more expensive later. Later, eventually we're gonna have robo taxis on we're 2019 the year of the tesla robo taxi believe you me it's gonna be happening my friends and what did happen to some hondas and acuras is because of a 32-bit integer problem that's going on with several different computing systems out there uh when we hit january 1st 2022 that reset their clocks uh to january 1st 2002 because of the fact that uh it just couldn't do all of that with the 32 bit signed integer so this is going to have to be patched out by honda and acura with them stating that it might potentially autocorrect itself after august and in case you need it fixed they might have a way to fix it or they might not whether or not they will is it really a problem if you're driving a, if you're driving a 2007 honda crv do you really need an accurate date on your clock i don't know what, what is it gonna affect? Let me know down below in the comments. But you know, we are gonna roll the clock back even further than 2002 to 1998. Let's talk about Half-Life getting its own ray tracing setup, a game developer releasing a teaser trailer of the fact that he is working on getting ray tracing, fully path traced version of Half-Life out there. We already have this in Quake 2, but it will eventually be available on a GitHub repository where you pick it up in case you wanna play Half-Life in the way that you should have thought it should have ever been. Did you ever wanna you wait you want you you could do so you that's the way it's gonna be and unfortunately the way that the aya neo is going to be which is a handheld gaming console competitor to the steam deck it's gonna be not very good because we were expecting a December 28th announcement of the APU that was gonna go into the Aya Neo. Some expectation that it might be based on the new Rembrandt APUs that are out there, sort of like what we're getting in the Steam Deck, but it turns out according to the reports that it's not. It's gonna be based on Cezanne, which is just with Zen 2 and then Vega graphics, which in my opinion is unfortunate for the company because I see very little reason why you would pick up the Aya Neo next or next Pro when it's based on a 5800U or as they reported a 5825U because you're just getting older technology. As you can see here, the 5825U is gonna be based on Zen 3 CPU, so actually pretty good, but still only Vega graphics. So the Aya Neo would be better in CPU, but because it doesn't have the RDNA 2 graphics that the Steam Deck would have, it's likely going to perform worse when it comes to actual video games, maybe better as a general purpose on the go computer. But when the thing looks like this and you're supposed to look legitimately just be playing video games on it, it's it's a tough sell. Let me know what you think of the iNeo and its APU down below in the comments. And Dr. Lisa Su wants you to think that AM5 is gonna be a long lived platform, at least that's according to an interview that's happening, not giving a specific time frame this time, learning the mistakes of what happened with AM4, where they said that they were gonna support it up to 2020, but that was only meant figuratively in that they're not gonna support all motherboards to support all CPUs and listen, it's the same socket, but just because you can't upgrade, hey, listen, you should have thought about that before you were broke and bought a B350 board, okay? How did you not, when we told you that your B350 board would be supported, why did you think it was gonna be supported, okay? So avoiding that by just saying it's gonna be a long lived platform of a similar kind to what's happening with AM4. But additionally to that, in an interview with Tom's Hardware, AMD's corporate VP and GM of the client channel business, discussed the fact that they are still actively looking of putting Ryzen 5000 series CPUs onto the 300 series chipsets, whether that's B350 or X370. There were plenty of X370 motherboards that could have supported this, like the Crosshair 6 Hero. And so the fact that it's not there 
is a pretty big deal. But him saying that I know that this has been a topic that honestly gets a lot of attention and a lot of discussion within AMD. And I'm not joking when I say that I've literally had three conversations on this very topic today. So they are still actively working on fulfilling the promise that they made to everybody. At least that was the general sentiment. I know that AMD fanboys and like AMD bros are just like, listen, you shouldn't expect it. All right, the, the socket still on B550, okay? They did technically support it till 2020. And that means I'm technically right, which is the best kind of right, except for it's not. It's just, it's a jerk move, all right? That's not what people were expected. That's not what they were sold. And it's just bad marketing by AMD on that front. Just like I think the 6500 XT is bad marketing by AMD. But what could be good marketing for me is the fact that we might be getting the Rembrandt APUs on desktop, according to that same interview, not quite announced by AMD, but saying that there's the dynamics of what's going on with DDR5 being way too expensive. So getting that on the platform likely won't make a whole lot of sense, but there are some indications that the APUs might come onto the AM5 socket. We might get the Rembrandt APUs that were just announced for laptops onto desktops, and I will be there day one as it happens. Listen, I'll criticize AMD all day long, but I'm still gonna buy the products too, cause I like, I like the stuff they come out with, all right? I have a 5300G, I got a 5600G, I got a 5700G, all right? I like AMD's products. Sometimes they make the wrong call, especially in how they communicate things. And I also do that, I'm bad. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I'm gonna stop communicating right now cause this episode of Hot News is over. Thank you for sticking with me for the hottest tech news that's on the internet. I'll be back tomorrow for more tech news.